to me, that was a very powerful emotional experience talking to her because she told me things that no one could have known but myself. And she was very accurate. I'm just telling you this because I believe that there is, in point of fact, something going on in the world where, um, for a lack of a better term, extraterrestrial, alien, if you please. I don't like the word alien because I know what it means. Uh, extraterrestrial or other world intelligences, higher life forms, are somehow or another intermingling with us. I am totally convinced that that's been the case since day one. Uh, I have become obviously more convinced now. I'm from Venus. I don't think anybody's going to believe that uh, you or anybody else could be from Venus. Could you explain to us how you could be when everybody knows it's uninhabitable? They think it's uninhabitable because it is not inhabitable by physical life forms. We have bodies of light. While Leah rambles on with fantastical ideas, she soon compels the audience toward global unity, a message found throughout the New Age movement. And what occurs here on this planet will affect the rest of the universe. Can you, with all of your different ideas, all of your different races, come together as one planet and one people? We have dedicated millennia upon millennia to this idea. The earlier experiments with Pan and Lemuria and Atlantis were not successful. But this one will be. And, and it did not start, this kind of ideas did not start with Von Däniken or uh, my friend, um, uh, some of the other authors like Zachariah Sitchin. Uh, there are many good and profoundly great authors writing on this kind of subject, but it didn't start with them. Uh, if you go back into the Bible, into uh, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, uh, in Genesis is just filled with such stories of, angels. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, in Genesis 18, there was a story, a very famous story in the Jewish tradition about um, uh, Abraham was visited by three men. And it says three men come walking up into Abraham's uh, camp. And Abraham went out and met them and asked them to stay for dinner, the scripture says. And the three men said no, they were in a hurry to go somewhere on business. And, and the scripture says that he in he insisted that they at least stay for dinner. So they said, all right, but make it quick. So the wife, uh, Sarah, fixed dinner for them. After eating, they thanked him for his hospitality. And the scripture says in Genesis 18 that the three men thanked him, got up, and excused themselves and went off. And it says, this was the almighty God, the creator, with two accompanying angels. Now, they looked like men. They sat down and had dinner with you. They got up, they, they thanked them, and walked off, and this was the Almighty God with two accompanying angels. I don't know, I wasn't there. This is what the scripture says. Then also in uh, Genesis, there is a story of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah where some uh, angels came to visit him, and it says the homosexuals in that town, the scripture said, thought that these uh, were handsome, extraordinary, good-looking men. There are other stories in Genesis and in the Bible about um, angels who uh, forsook their proper dwelling place and took on human form and started messing around with women. And the Bible says, along with many other uh, holy writings of the ancient world, talk about aliens who took on human form, not just in the Hebrew tradition, but many of the ancients had the same kind of stories where alien life forms, angels if you please, uh, took on human form and began to mess around with women and got them pregnant. This tells me their plumbing worked. All of that frightens me, because there may be some around here, we don't even know who they are. They appear to be men, they appear to be human. 
And of course, the Jewish tradition in, in Judaism teaches in the Bible that uh, God made us in his image and likeness. Uh, the point being in the Hebrew, uh, meaning in your bodily form, the way you are designed, is because the gods look like that. You look like them, they look like you. Why? Because they created you from them. Uh, I tend to think that there is a modicum of truth in that. Maybe it's a, in a, you know, it's, a, it's a beautiful story, it tells you something, but I think there might be something more to this story. That being the case, uh, this is why I'm concerned about world government, world religion, and where we are going as a human race. Who is in point of fact in charge on this earth? There has never existed one culture on the earth that did not recognize the gods and the gods who were behind the kings and the great gods who were behind all things. Not one culture has ever existed that did not recognize that there were higher forces at work on the earth. Uh, I, there is no doubt in my mind that our government is also very keenly aware. There, even within the Christian and Jewish religion, there is much uh, proof in the Bible of the existence of angels or spirit creatures who are influencing man's uh, uh, destiny. So I have no problem with, uh, with uh, believing that there is some sort of a extraterrestrial, if you will, uh, intelligence, because just even the, the knowledge that the ancient Sumerians, for instance, and the Egyptians had about our universe, about the, uh, the whole concept of the uh, procession of the equinox, how the sun moves backwards in the signs and, and the different uh, astrological symbols and the, and the astrological terms. And, and uh, there's just too much occult or hidden knowledge that was known by the ancients that could not have been just intuitive. It had to have been from someone out there who brought the knowledge to us. Mm -hmm.